Well, the first thing you do is you don't compete against Cambridge for Vertex Pharmaceuticals, okay? I mean, I, it's great that they're here. But really, we should be working with the, our partner cities and towns in the 128 area and creating an economic reason for companies to relocate here from California, from New York, from the Midwest, wherever, from China. We should be, we should be working as, a, as a, uh, a broader community to make ourselves the most attractive region for innovation, the most attractive region for jobs, uh, the most attractive region for the green jobs that we know are really important for the future. These are all things that can happen if we work collaboratively. And my goal is to make sure that we are very, very attractive to the rest of the world and that we're not competing against our neighbors. We're actually working with them to make ourselves the most attractive region to, uh, to, to move your employers to. Talk to me about the BRA. What's your thoughts on the BRA and what it needs now and what it needs to be better if, in fact, you think it needs to be better? Oh, I definitely think it needs to be better. Um, I mean, I mean, for instance, I was just looking at the list of, uh, of uh, projects that have been approved just in the last few weeks and wondering whether there's a deadline, a sunset clause on those, because clearly they're allowing millions of square feet of space to be developed. I can't picture the city being able to absorb that much space in that little time. So hopefully there's a sunset clause of maybe two years to get your package together to start your building project before, you know, or you lose the, the ability to build it. Um, so there's a lot of issues that I have with the BRA. But probably the biggest issue is the fact that it's uh, very opaque. Uh, we don't know really where the money comes from and where it goes to. We don't have much of a budget there. It's, it's a part of city government, but it's not really a part of city government. So we need to be transparent about everything we do there. The second thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we're really planning. And right now, uh, there are complaints across, across the city, uh, wherever I go, about the fact that they don't think master planning occurs very effectively in the Boston Redevelopment Authority. And if we're really going to be able to, um, to make sure that the neighbors are happy, the business community is happy, institutions are happy about the way in which development happens, we need to have good master plans. And we don't do that. And we don't codify those master plans into zoning. So uh, developers don't know exactly how they're going to go through. All they know is that everything they propose winds up as a zoning variance, which creates all sorts of problems and delays. We can do things better. In Columbia Point, where near where I live, um, uh, uh, two, for two years, the community came together with the business community and institutions and was able to come up with a master plan for Columbia Point that called for housing in particular areas. The first two development projects immediately after that was uh, passed were two housing developments right where we wanted them. And as a result, the community passed it like that. Why? Because the community knew about it. The community agreed with it beforehand. We need that to happen in the city. Talk to me about the arts and culture. I'm very interested in where all of the candidates stand on the arts. I'm a, I'm a guy who believes in art, believes in music, believes in all of that to get one out of one's head and enjoy and embrace something else. Where do you come down on the arts? Huh. Total supporter of it. Uh, let me tell you about career academies. When I mentioned earlier, I mentioned arts and music specifically, because yes, what a wonderful career to have in the arts and music. Um, my, one of my things that uh, came up last night, actually, I was talking to a group of supporters, and the idea of uh, launching a career academy out of a Boston public school with uh, Berklee College of Music, one of the greatest music schools in the world, right here in Boston. Could we work with them and create an opportunity for a, a career academy out of one of our schools that focuses on music? Yes, we, we can do this stuff. You know, Boston is a great place with wonderful resources. We can do that kind of work, and not just in the Arts Academy, which is a great school, but we need to be able to expand that. And we need to be able to fund it, and we need to be able to have the time to do it in our school system. But we also need to make sure that we're building housing for artists in this city, because we want to make sure that artists are allowed or able to live in this city. And right now, the housing problem in the city is really driving uh, working class and uh, people out, especially artists and musicians who really can't afford to live here. How would you turn that around? I'm talking about housing now. Um, if you notice what's going on in the Dudley Square area, you know, and in Ruggles and all up Blue Hill Avenue, you know, I wonder oftentimes as I'm driving up there and I see what's happening here with uh, new businesses and new initiatives coming online, are the people that live there are going to get priced out once all of this work is done and you've got, you know, a, 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 um, more affluence that moves into those areas, the folks that are there presently may have to relocate. How do you address that and to keep folks in their homes? 
Well, one of the things that we found is that when the real estate values go up, people that own homes uh, oftentimes, you know, see it as a ticket to, you know, to Nirvana land, you know, to some other place they always wanted to live, and they sell their house for a high price, and of course that just boosts up the, the cost of the condo that ultimately winds up there. We've seen that happen in, in Dorchester, in Roxbury, we've seen it happen all across the city. Uh, I'm worried very much about that, and what I think needs to happen is we need to have better linkage arrangements, arrangements with the, the downtown uh, million dollar condos that are being built all over in the former combat zone in the waterfront area in South Boston, you know, million dollar condos. We need to make sure that we're getting the dollars necessary out of in linkage to be able to build affordable housing. And I support the idea of transit oriented development. I believe that we can have more dense uh, development of housing near public transit lines, whether it's big bus stations, train stations, commuter rail stations. We need to build a lot of housing in order to put the lid on the real estate prices. And the governor thinks it's 17,000 units a year. Um, we're not coming anywhere close to that. So we need to create the, uh, first of all, the dollars that will allow us to build it. The second thing we need to do is make sure that we work with the developers, we work with the architects, we work with community groups to figure out how we lower the cost of producing a unit of housing. Right now it's $350,000 a unit. Um, I talked to Kirk Sykes, who you probably know. Kirk uh, was talking about a, a luring a prefab uh, factory into the Boston area with the goal of creating good quality housing for $250,000 per unit. Makes sense to me. You know, if we're able to lower the price of housing, we're going to be able to lower, um, you know, we're going to be able to make sure that we keep more people in the city that we want to keep in the city. So I, I strongly believe in a, a strong transit-oriented development and lowering the cost of housing. Listen, we've only got a couple of minutes left. What I'd like you to do is to look in the camera, and I'd like you to talk to the folks at home or wherever they may be, um, and talk to them about why they should seriously consider giving you their vote to become the next mayor of Boston. Well, I really do appreciate this. And uh, So my name is Bill Walczak. Uh, I've spent my life building lasting institutions in my city of Boston, whether it's Boston Medical Center, or Codman Square Health Center, or Edward Kennedy Health Careers Academy, Codman Academy. Uh, the statewide nonprofit association. These are all institutions I've worked with. I've also worked overseas in the Irish peace process in Southern Africa for microenterprise. I have a broad experience in building things, growing things, and protecting the dollars that are necessary to make sure that the city of Boston is able to work well. I'm the only person that uh, won't have to learn on the job. Uh, I've done this. I've worked in large institutions. I've managed uh, broad teams of senior managers in achieving the goals that we all want to see achieved in the city of Boston, which is a great education system where the achievement gap is eliminated. Uh, the greenest city, the healthiest city in America, the city that is able to solve our problems and link the world-class city that's emerging downtown to our neighborhoods so that people in our neighborhoods are able to get these jobs and these innovation centers that are happening in Boston. I'm the person that can make this happen because I've made it happen. You can look at my record. You can look at my inclusionary hiring, my ability to hire great senior leaders to achieve goals. And that's what I'm all about. If you elect me mayor, I will be the person that's able to hit the ground running and make the changes that the city sees necessary to make our city even prosper greater than it is. Well, I want to thank you for coming on. Sure. I really appreciate it. We wish you Godspeed out there on the trail. You've got two long, hot months ahead of you. God help uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> September 24th is the primary. Yeah. Uh, November, is it 8th, 6th? Is the first or second Tuesday in November is the yeah. general. Yeah. So good luck to you. Hey, thank, thank you, you very so much. very much for coming Pleasure on. Pleasure to be here. And uh, down the road, I'd like to have you come back and just you know give us an update as to where everything is going. I'd be happy to do that. Okay, folks, so uh, that was Bill Walzak, candidate for the next mayor of Boston. We're going to go to a break, and on the other side, we're going to have Felix Arroyo here, and he's going to talk to us about why you should consider giving him your vote for Mayor of Boston. Please do stay tuned.